What's good? We're back with another edition and we got the tripod in full effect. What's up, fellas? How we doing? Tripod. I don't think that's what that looked like. <laughs> that was more of a diamond. I think I think we're looking more for a triangle. All right. Uh, Rounded corners, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, so this is our second look at off-season Dynasty ADP via DLF, which is like, you know, kind of is the standard for some Dynasty League football. Uh, but this time we got them rookies. I know y'all are just straight up fiending for those things. <laughs> Um, so this time we got them the way at DLS draft, uh, mock draft stuff works. They use an average of six drafts to come up with these numbers. Uh, this will continue to change throughout the off seasons due to free agents, the NFL draft and off season narratives that get built and or created. Uh, the point of this is to not go into detail about every single player uh, and who you think you should buy or sell, uh, but more so just to get to start to get familiar with the values and where they are and where you stand and where you can learn the market for the off season here. Cause that's, you know, one of the most fun parts about dynasty is the off season and here knowing the values and when to make moves and try to trade and, and who to kind of go and get and see how people are valuing things. Yo, if rookies were a cold stone size, it'd be gotta have it. <laughs> sorry. That? Who, who, who did that? That was a Z's on sorry Z's, in, Z's, uh, yeah. in funny people. It was a movie. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm yeah. thin, I'm thin, I'm thin. And he's just dancing around. He's like, <laughs> I just bent that crowd over. So we got Jay Wayne up there talking about Fiend and we got Big Co. How you doing, Big Co? Give, well, me, give me a little voice. He bent some crowd over and I'm not so, I don't know if I wanted to hear the rest of that joke or not. <laughs> Well, if you're listening on via podcast, there is a visual aid to go along with this on YouTube. Be about 24 players at a time so you can better follow along there because we're not going to keep shouting out every single number with every single player. Um, and either way, you need to hop over there and subscribe, like, comment, help your boys out. Uh, we got play, rookie player profiles coming out over there. We just got, uh, we did Jalen Waddle. We just got Bateman done. We got more down the pipe there. So make sure you subscribe, get the notification right to your little fingertips. So you don't miss anything. We got some uh, Jalen Hurts talk, some Carson Wentz talk, and just all throughout the off season going to be good stuff. And we're going to continue with those rookie profiles as well as doing, as soon as this ADP comes out, we're going to try to keep this up once a month to just keep you informed where all these guys are falling. You got and we got some. We start. We got some good visuals and some film and stuff for you to for you to look at in those rookie profiles. So if you're not on the tubes, you need to go check it out because it's there yeah. for your pleasure. All right, <laughs> round one. If we had a, a cute girl was to walk across with the round card, she'd be going across right now. So uh, let's get Olivia Munn in here. CMC remains supreme leader. <laughs> He's holding it down at the one spot. Um, Jonathan Taylor jumps up another spot and he's into the two spot. Saquon moves up to number three. Kamara moves down two spots to four. Dalvin jumps up into the area where I think he should be. And I would probably be taking him over Kamara. Um, Devonte Adams stays pretty much the same where he was in that, in that group and DK falls down to seven. I was having a hard time taking him there or taking him where he was, where he was at five ahead of Dalvin overall. So again, I think Dalvin's in a better spot than he, where he should be in my opinion. And I'm still struggling to take DK in this spot here. Anybody agree, disagree with anything that's going on above. I agree with most of that. I think I would take Kamara over Dalvin. I mean, he's guaranteed to get you six touchdowns in the championship week. So, I mean, <laughs> what, what about you, Big Co? Will you, will you take Dalvin over Kamara? Or? That's a toss-up. I mean, I would rather probably see Dalvin's name on my on my yeah. team lineup just because uh, Dalvin's my, my guy. Who doesn't like Alvin Kamara? If you're sitting there, look, it's a perfect spot of just maybe see if somebody wants – if you're at five – or if you're at four with both of them on the board, just get a future second round pick to move back one and take one, take the next one. If you if you're torn and you don't really care, just get yourself a second round pick to move back a spot and let somebody make the decision and you take the other one. Sure. If it doesn't matter to you, if it matters to you, you take the one you want the most. All right. Well, Ty Tyreek Hill jumps up from spot 11 to spot eight. I know, Jay Wayne, you like that, that you talked about that on the last thing we did. Uh, Derek Henry moves up to the nine overall spot from 12 and ahead of rookie Jeff Je Justin Jefferson this go round. Uh, so, you know, the rookie falls back down a couple of picks. Tyreek and Derek Henry usurp him. 
somewhat. Uh, Nick Chubb climbed back into the first round, probably rightfully so, at pick 11. And the biggest mover right here, uh, Akers jumps all the way up from a fringe second rounder at 23 to the last pick of the first round. That's expensive money, man. Yeah. What are your thoughts on on Cam Akers in that jump up? You paying that money? Is it warranted? I know he obviously crushed. People like what happened at the end of the season to be like, oh, yeah, this is this has got to be it. What, what are you guys' thoughts here? Well, you put that together with Stafford. Um, that's He's got a couple things working for him. Uh, the good, strong end of the season push uh, separated himself from the other running backs on the team. You bring in Stafford, you know, adds fuel to the fire. What it does is, is for me, it takes away the dreams of being like at the front of the draft at the start and being able to get your CMC Saquon and be like, you give me Saquon or CMC and they get back to the end of the second, early third and give me a Cam Akers back there and put that together with somebody else fun, you know, uh, to just uh, Antonio Gibson potentially starting like that, what, that would just foil those plans with Cam Akers coming up to the end of the first there. I think that's just way too much. Like too much. All there's right. so many, there's so many, uh, there's, there's other guys that, that I'd have to, I'd have to grab. I mean, something you said during the season, Casey still resonates with me. You mentioned something like, you know, McVay comes from the line of thinking like, look like Shanahan and, and LaFleur and, and maybe he saw what happened with Gurley and he's hesitant to give any one running back, like the ton, the bulk of the carries. And I don't know if, what was going on in that running back stable at the end of the year, whether there were in injuries and they were just kind of feeding well, yeah. him at that point in time. Henderson was banged up. Right. And so we saw the year before, right, where Tyler Higby blew up and we thought for that those four games that that was going to be the case the next season. And then it comes in and they still have Gerald Everett and they still want to mix things up and it didn't, it didn't continue that way. And I don't know if there's maybe some – Something maybe like I could see yeah. Akers coming out next year, not performing like he did at the end of this past season. And I'm not ready to just be like, oh, well, that's going to happen for sure forever. And let me they, take him at the end of the first round. I, I don't Ooh. know if it's necessarily about you get. I, I love the addition of Stafford. That definitely helps with the Akers. Very and, true. And I, I know that this is what McVay wants to get back to being a run first kind of team and play some defense um, and then do kind of what McVay does uh, offensively. It'd be even harder to stop just like they were when Gurley was the man. Uh, but I think I, I don't hate that. Uh, obviously, I said it a while ago, so I, I don't hate it. Uh, but it's not so much that, you know, the talent and him, you know, being able to score as many fantasy points. It might be the opportunity of of having the enough touches to warrant the end of the first round pick here. There could be some, right. you Especially know, Henderson. How mixing good in Henderson and, looked at points during the year. Right. Well, I, just to cap it off before we keep going, because yeah. I know we want to keep it moving, but there's so much safety in, like, say, the next pick, and on average there is A.J. Brown, right? Mm -hmm. You take A.J. Brown, you're not messing it up. There is a huge amount of upside built into Acres. Mm -hmm. There's a lot For of upside sure. built into A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown's ton. I saw a tweet the other day by somebody smart. It might have been Curtis Patrick, but somebody said, wait till A.J. Brown actually gets the amount of targets he deserves, and then the numbers are just going to be ridiculous because – points per fantasy something something something's you know per <laughs> per opportunity is ridiculous yeah. with aj brown his efficiency dot, is ridiculous though? uh it doesn't matter when he scored touchdowns for 70 yards it. away um that yak and then you put some monster yak on some low a dot you still got a lot of points um but that can makers upside is ridiculous so yeah. i like yeah it, it, i like the reference I, I really like the um tight end reference that, that jay wayne just pulled out obviously different position the offense is based off of the play action game, you th every the jet sweeps and everything else, and every all all the plays. Are, all they're, they're all the built to complement each other. And like, well, this was a run action last play. It looks the same, and sometimes they hand it off, sometimes they boot this way, sometimes they do that way. Back to you know the whole McVay Shanahan stuff, but and that's they, they like a rotation Acres, they that you know it looks I like mean, they might it looks like McVay well, might he like didn't, a rotation he didn't, he didn't like a rotation and then his guy the guy who he was leaning on got hurt and and kind of fucked him so i could see them wanting to just kind of keep their guys as fresh as possible to keep that running game and, and have maybe have a little bit more rotation than a first round running back for the Rams is, is maybe worth not that it's not too far away. And I, th I think the talents there, if they're going to give it to him in there, he's already saying, you know, just to add more fuel to this 
ADP jump fire. He, McVay's over there saying, you know, he he seems and feels like a a, a workhorse running back. Cam Akers, he said that recently. Uh, so that that's even more fuel to that fire. You yeah, got closing statement I'd, there, Big Co. I don't feel like they're going to be like, all right, we got to save some miles on this 22 year old kid. If this a running back, we got if, a good committee back here. Yeah, nah, they're not going to say if that. Good. If it's working, if it's working, and if if he gives them the best chance of getting first downs and moving the ball down the field towards the red zone. I feel like they would ride him until he, he can't. Yeah, well, ride and, and it could be, it could like be, hey, say, save him. well, it's, it could be, hey, we're going to rotate these guys and then we're going to ride the hot hand. And it's not to say that Akers is always going to be the hot hand. Henderson showed point. that he can be the hot hand. Yeah. Well, I think that yeah, there will be some into, sort of rotation in there because they saw what happened. If, if you're taking Cam, if you're putting Cam Akers on your team and use your first pick of your new dynasty startup, that's a gamble. Yeah. There's a lot of upside there, but, you know, I would, I would probably be like, hey, man, even the running back guy must, that I am, I might be like, hey, let me grab this A.J. Brown right here yeah. because I don't want to be in week six of the season being like, what if – what I do wrong, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's lots of time for Akers to really develop into the guy he wants to be. I think it might be a hair rich for my blood right now, but anyway. It's too much projecting. Yeah, possibly. Uh, next year we could just be like, hey, Akers is – the top six pick. So exactly. Uh, That's how this works. Round two. AJ Brown lost his first round credentials, as you mentioned, big co, but keeps it stock strong at 13. I like AJ Brown more than I like DK Metcalf. I would take AJ Brown over DK Metcalf, but I would not take DK Metcalf as high as he was. I like AJ Brown. I think he's fucking awesome. More than uh, DK. Yeah. That's I'm, a hot take. I just really like AJ Brown, man. Um, DeAndre Swift is the next running back. We'll probably park and talk a little bit more than we are. We're going to throughout the acres Swift thing here. Uh, so DeAndre Swift amongst the Detroit fallout here uh, floats down kind of like a falling leaf to 14 here. Um, so thoughts on that. He was all the way up at, I believe six in this last go round. Um, what are your thoughts on, on that fall? Uh, he was at eight. Sorry. Uh, so eight down to 14. Obviously, because, the Stafford trade comes yeah. in. You know, thoughts on on Swift there? Would you be wanting to take the swing on Swift if you were, uh, say, at, you know, pick twelve and you had two picks here? You could take AJ Brown and Swift. Would you take AJ Brown and Acres? You know, what do you what do you think here? I definitely take AJ Brown with one of those picks, and I think I'd rather have I would too. I think I'd rather have Swift, but I, I don't know. What does the resident Lions fan think here, Rico? Although the situation's yeah, I've been talking so about much jumping better shit. in LA. Situation's a million times better in LA. Although you can have a running back on a bad team getting plenty of fantasy points, i.e. Jaguars and James Robinson James this Ryan, year. Yeah. You know, there's nothing that says that they're gonna Swift. ride I think they're gonna ride some Swift for sure. I, I mean I said a bunch of times last year I thought carry on could be just as good or better than Swift. I was carry on as greater than Swift guy and I, I don't I don't know if it's comes into the carry on's tweeting about how much better DeAndre Swift than he I don't know if carry on has a killer instinct off the field and the coaches don't appreciate it or what but like there was a if, if you look in his game log, I don't remember what game week it was, maybe week 12, week 14 or something, got like five catches and he got four of them on one drive. And like I was called Casey and I was like, look at there, are you seeing carry on Johnson? Like it, they gave him like zero run. And when they do, when they did, I guess somebody was nicked up or something. You gave him a series and you just out there sucking in targets like a magnet. I don't understand why they won't even play this guy, but <laughs> obviously they're into the swift now. Um, I think there's, upside's huge for Swift again. I think obviously you'd lose Stafford. That sucks, but you're going to, the ball's got to go to somebody and the head coach is over here talking about eating kneecaps. So he's obviously going to be the running, but running physicality, be, baby. Yeah. I, the, the running game's going to be there. It might not be completely wide open because you're not, nobody's scared of Jared Goff beating you down the field. Um, well, now they got Tyrell Williams or, uh, right. Yeah, they picked up a, the, the burner, up, the gazelle burner for a year. Um, it'll be interesting. I, I would, I would be looking for a little bit. I mean, I, I'm, you're probably not going wrong if you took like a JK Dobbins and a, and a Cam Akers back to back here or a Swift and a Dobbins or a Swift and an Akers. You'd mix it I up. Like that. I, I like I that. I could, I give, could take give me a, Brown and Dobbins. Yeah. Give, give me AJ Brown and, and maybe any of those three running backs really, um, the All thing, right. yeah, yeah, I don't want to go backwards and say that Nick yeah. Chubb is safer, but we know Nick Chubb is a really good running back yeah. in the NFL. Uh, but DeAndre Swift has that PPR upside that, you, that you're looking for. 
So good foreshadowing there. Moving along here, two more rookies come behind Swift, J.K. Dobbins and C.D. Lamb, uh, fifteen and sixteen here, both sticking around where they were the last time we did this last month. Um, Zeke moves back up a few spots to the middle of the second. He comes in at eighteen. He was at twenty-two. So D- Zeke's slowly eating his way back up the food chain here. Um, He's a fast eater. Travis Kelsey back to the tight end one title uh, moves from pick 21 or moves into pick 21 from 31. We talked last time about how Kittle has finally jumped him in the uh, tight end spectrum. But, you know, I think people are reflecting back on that Kelsey season and how he was basically like a top five wide receiver all season. And right. they're back in on Kelsey and got him a couple spots ahead. Um, Josh Jacobs continues his slide, but stays inside the second round. Um, but it feels like this tumble isn't over. So he kind of dusts himself off a little bit here. Uh, he's at 22. He fell all the way down from 10. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Um, so obviously Josh Jacobs, let's stop and talk for here for a second. Left Josh Jacobs left something to be desired uh, in some games last season, as far as total points in your lineup uh, at the end of some weeks. Um, and you know, a couple of some of that three sixers. Yeah. Some, some of that can be, you know, he needs to be a little healthier. Some of that needs to, needs to be talked about how the radius O line was banged up and COVID riddled throughout for weeks on end throughout the season. And they were using all sorts of different combinations of line. Um, some of that is Nelson Aguilar was a new face on the team and he's your best wide receiver. That's actually designated as a wide receiver. Um, you know, they drafted rugs and Edwards, but they didn't quite make their impacts felt like some people thought they might. Uh, and at the end of the day, though, Josh Jacobs is RB eight through week 16. Um, so, you know, obviously we'd like to see a little bit more use in the passing game because he I think he's absolutely capable of crushing in that area. But I think some some of the shade for Josh Jacobs is unwarranted at this point. Thoughts? Well, he does have a suspension coming up, so that's not great. You're going to miss a couple games off the rip. Um, what do you get suspended for? DUI. Yeah. Is he he's definitely not, getting suspended? He will definitely get suspended. I don't know. Not, that might not, not even happen until next year, though. He's definitely missing the, at least the first two games. Um, I'm giving him one game. <laughs> next year. The 2022 <laughs> suspension. Yeah. Pro-rated. One game this year, one game next year. No, no, they don't. It usually doesn't turn around that quickly. Like, that's usually – they let the legal system play out first. Yeah, he's already it happened apologized. early enough I mean, in the he, op, he, off season, but – I'm not worried about it. What, what else you got? <laughs> well, you're missing you're missing ten percent of the fantasy season. Um, but he, uh, the Raiders, the Raiders look good some games. They beat the Chiefs, and the Raiders look like the Raiders some games. Um, there's the talk. There's somebody was saying that they thought Carr was about to get an, an extension. I'm kind of mixed on that. Obviously, sometimes Carr looks good, and sometimes. It's hard to forget that Carr throws the ball away on fourth down sometimes, and it's just like you can't. That's May I came point. out and said he's one of the best QBs in the league. It's the point of his fourth and goal. <laughs> yeah, sure. And if you don't throw it in the end zone, you're losing. So, like, it's hard to get those pictures out of my mind when I talk about Carr. And the guy um, liner. Yeah, that, well, I get it. The reflection of the sun, especially on the yeah, West Coast. Who knows what's going on over there? They don't even know which side to where the sun comes up and goes down over there. Whatever that that stadium's reflecting the sun. That thing's <laughs> sick. It is a sick stadium. I mean, I think I'm, I agree. Some of the I think a lot of the shade for Josh Jacobs is going to be is unwarranted. I think it's you see the glimpses in the game where they throw him the ball, even if it's in the flat, and he shakes a couple guys and breaks their ankles and takes off, and it's just like, what are you doing, wasting your time throwing it to the other running backs? You yeah. know, like they bring even, in every single capable the, pass catching back that's yeah, on the free agent list the two, in the whole entire the two, NFL. It's like, the what the hell, minute, man? The two minute drills, <laughs> the third and longs. It's just like, there's no Josh Jacobs is still your best opportunity on the field. Like, why is it? Why? Yeah, this other little scat back over here might have a little bit more t- top end speed, but Josh Jacobs is the one breaking tackles. Yeah, you know, for sure. So it's, it's, it's frustrating, but I think there's, he's still, he's 23 years old. So I think you're, uh, I think you're, if yeah. you're getting him this late, if you're getting him, if he slides end down, the, end of the second, if, and it seems like in it's a real draft, more. exactly. I was about to say that in a real draft, if he become pick twenty five and he's your third name on your on your startup, 
you're in a you're in a good spot. I'm stoked. <laughs> and the Raiders haven't fully like I just feel like there there's there hadn't been a whole lot of talent offensively, skill position wise, besides Darren Waller. Like there just hasn't been. And I feel like if you can surround Carr with even a little bit more talent receiving wise, I think Jacobs could just eat a little bit more. Now sometimes it does seem like why are you going away from Jacobs? Uh, but right, I think there's two types of people when it comes to drafting Jacobs. The the people who think that this is who he is and he's never going to get any more receiving production. And then there's the other people like us who have seen him catch balls in college really well, seen him be successful in the pros doing it. Don't understand why they don't do it more. Think that that still could improve some. Um, and then, and then there, maybe there's a third person that's right in the middle. And is like, well, I don't know if he's going to get more receiving production or if they're just going to keep it this way, but he was still RB eight and I need a running back. And so that's properly rated ADP there. And I like and, it and properly low, rated. Even if it's, in my opinion, probably a little low just because of running backs, and and if it falls even lower, then that's just a, this is just this screams go by Josh Jacobs. I think. Yeah. Just fish, fish to see if you can get some cheaper Agreed. Josh Jacobs. Go fishing yeah. on Josh Jacobs. I like it. So we got two more rookies here, uh, rounding out the second round: Gibson and Clyde Edwards. Hey there. Uh, Clyde Edwards is obviously up near the first round in December here. Oh man. Um, it's just everybody loved this guy, and now the, now they're just mad at him because he wasn't the number one running back in the NFL. I don't know. Yeah, so I don't know if he's spending too much time with Josh Jacobs or what, but them boys need to tighten up, get themselves back up near the top of this uh, second round, end of the first, and uh, see what's going on. But I think I think this Clyde edwards alaire stuff is also probably a little aggressive that it just seems like people are just ready to throw shade on him, much like – you know, Clyde started out pretty decent through the season and people were like, oh, Clyde, we're not using him in the passing game, but oh, Clyde, he's not even unlocked there. And then Jonathan Taylor's getting shit on. Jonathan Taylor crushes the end of the season. Uh, CEH doesn't play the last part of the season and, you know, wasn't doing his thing like he needed to do. I think he might have been nicked up throughout the season here and there. I think he missed week he missed a couple 13 games as well. Uh, and then he missed week uh, 16 and 17, I believe. Um, so, but missed three through, games. Yep. through week 15, uh, he was RB 13. So still like you can hate on him all you want. And he wasn't anywhere near where you think he could be or should be, uh, you know, week seven, eight and nine. He had a three game stretch there where he didn't break double digit carries, eight carries, six carries, five carries at no point in the season. Did that happen again where he didn't have double digit carries? He had that every single other game um, and then 36 receptions. You know, I think that could easily be the career low for this guy. This is his strong suit. Um, and I think I think that that's just going to continue to improve. Um, and he only scored four rushing touchdowns total this season, which I also think that could be a career low. Like I think that Clyde Edwards is going to be just fine. He showed you on the field that he could do exactly what he did in college. He's very hard to bring down. He made a ton of people miss. There's games where they did ride him and he was the star. Um, you saw in the Super Bowl, they probably they didn't give themselves a chance because they didn't give Clyde the ball enough. You saw a halftime where they come out and they were just running it down the throat. Like, you know, I know Andy had a lot of things going on and all that kind of shit. Uh, but you know, th there were times that they needed to adjust and get back to that run. Um, and I think Clyde Edwards is going to be a bigger part of the game plan moving forward and uh, unlocking all the things that he can do. Now, obviously they have, you know, some people are out because they have so many weapons, but um, that cap's going to tighten down. Some of those guys are going to get out of there. Travis Kelsey is going to get older. You know, Tyree Kill is going to be Tyree Kill. But there's there's room for plenty of players on the Chiefs there. And I think Clyde Edwards will be that, you know, more of that guy uh, moving forward. Any thoughts there, fellas? No, well said. I think I really like the part about his reception total maybe being a career low. Um, I, I think that... Again, he was first round pick, so he's got an extra year before he can hold out if he was to start to crush it. You know, you're tied to Patrick Mahomes for a while. Obviously, that's top offense, top three offense in the league at any given Sunday. Feels like, uh, I mean, they say Travis, Travis Kelsey hadn't missed a game in five years. He is 31 years old, but he's playing like he's still in his prime, no problem. Like you said, top two or three receiver in the league at this point. Um, you're going to always have the potential it's, it's kind of like that Aaron Rodgers problem for his running back for a few years where f at any at any given Sunday 
Patrick Mahomes can throw four or five touchdowns and the mm-hmm. running back doesn't even get a carry inside of 10 because all the touchdowns happen from the 12 or back. You know, Tyreek takes it in from and 45. It, it feels like that's just whether or not Andy Reid wants to get Patrick <laughs> Mahomes a bunch of touchdowns or not. It's just like they can do whatever they want. It does. Sometimes it feels like they could score in any direction that from, from anywhere on the field or they get down there to the goal lines. Like, all right, do we want to give it to Tyreek or do we want to give it to Kelsey or who, who what number we're going to call here? And, you know, it's, it Patrick kinda, Mahomes touchdown total. It, it also it, let's get it up this week. Like it also feels like as the maturation of Patrick Mahomes, we've seen him be so un, unbeatable. And now you know there's been a couple of times where he started to maybe see a little bit of chink in the armor here, where he's trying to do too much. Where Clyde edwards alaire can become his best friend in the receiving game and do so much for him without Patrick Mahomes having to do so much and putting himself in harm's way uh, from backing up 15 yards, making three guys miss and then th- throwing a ridiculous pass where he could just move a little bit and hit Clyde and, and do big things uh, and whilst getting re- receiving touchdowns from Clyde Edwards or a lot of yards and first downs. That's a lot. That's, that's pretty powerful stuff there. If you think about what the Saints have done the last couple of years with a Drew Brees who could barely get the ball down the field once or twice a season, you know, like if, if the Saint, uh, obviously Andy Reid, knows what just happened to him they it, you they ran up against the two best most athletic fastest linebackers in the league mm-hmm. and they just happened to be on the same team and right? i'm not trying to downgrade patrick mahomes sure no, yeah but i mean like it was a perfect storm of defenses like that the, the perfect storm of the giants defenses who could beat beat brady in the super bowl with that d-line like those linebackers were the perfect storm to be able to go sideline to sideline with the chiefs offense and still probably not enough made about Patrick Mahomes turf toe issue mm-hmm. and all, you know you've seen the stat he ran 497 yards <laughs> yeah trying to evade which he probably sacks. runs more than most I don't know what his standard issue is but he probably side, does sure. run more than a lot of quarterbacks because he does a lot of backing up 15 yards before he throws it downfield True. He can, I'm sure he's the leader in that in, in the group him and him and Russell, Russell Wilson yeah probably right there neck and neck but yeah what you were said was I think Andy Reid's going back to the drawing board as he always does every year and it's just like about you said, Andy. what are we going to do? Uh, you can't, you're, you're not going to make an all pro offensive line out of what they got overnight. So how, what, what, how are we going to supplement our offensive line woes to keep yeah. Patrick Mahomes from getting beat up? Of course, every game, they're not going to go up against the Bucks defense. Sure. Who was also the number one running back, uh, running team against the run last season. And so you're not going to go up against them every week, but they're probably looking at the drawing board right now going, Exactly what Casey said. How can we make things easier on Pat? Oh, we could dump it down to Clyde. And then what happens when, because the defense is, you know, you've got a couple of proven ways to not beat them, but slow them down, take it from the Patriots. You go, go out there and you make every, make back your safeties up that they were sure. talking about how the Bucks safeties were after the ball was snapped, they're 40 yards downfield. Mm-hmm. Cause you, you're like, Hey, you're not going to throw it over our head. And so if you're checking it down to Clyde, he's going to have space because people are backed up, worried about Tyreek Hill and the linebackers are chasing Kelsey around. Yeah. So I think he's I a think mismatch. You're going to, you're going to put a, a good, your, your best probably running cover linebacker on Kelsey with a safety. Time. And now, you know, you got an easy match for, for Clyde. So I think, will they do it like that? I don't know, but this yeah. is the story that we put together and it sounds sure. good. Bingo. Well, let me, let me wrap this up real quick. This, this right. back to the ADP for, for Clyde, right? I think, this is a little exciting for me because I was been bummed about Clyde Edwards Hilaire ever since he got drafted by the Chiefs, basically, because we were on him before he got drafted by the Chiefs when nobody freaking liked him. And his ADP was like down at 60 something. And he was a steal that you could obtain. And then all of a sudden he's a chief. And I think he peaked at like four or five overall ADP at some point last year. One four and, for sure. And now he's now he's sliding down and it's almost like he's properly rated at this point and maybe even a bit of a bargain because, I mean, this guy came in with no offseason. He's a rookie. He was never asked to pass protect at all in college. And now you come into this pro system where you've got a bunch of other professionals in that room with you. And if you can't catch up quickly to, to pass protect, you're not going to get on the field and pass down situations and also get those PPR targets. So it, it took him a minute to get up to speed and he also dealt with the injury. And so, there's just so much more ceiling that's untapped here. And people are just already mad because it didn't come to fruition overnight or it did actually in week, week one. one. And then it, yeah. and then it, and then it no just, catches, but he ran the piss out of the ball and then he killed right. the bills a couple of weeks later. Right. And I mean, he looked good and it just, he just, 
it just yeah. didn't work out from an opportunity standpoint. He got stuffed a few times on the goal line. I like what you said about the, the career low for both uh, receptions and touchdown, rushing touchdowns. I think that's a good point. I think this is a good opportunity to finally be able to obtain Clyde because he was too expensive last year. Yeah, I agree. And so just rounding out the uh, second round here, and we did a lot of rookie talking, and, and you know, I just wanted to stop and park on some guys. We're going to move a little faster here through the la- next couple of rounds. Uh, but eight 2020 rookies in the top 24. Uh, so decent stockpile. You know, that was a good draft. If you needed some help in the first round, you probably <laughs> most likely yeah. got it uh, for your fantasy team. So round three, uh, cue the round girl. So you could throw Miles Sanders in with Clyde Edwards, Alaire, Josh Jacobs, um, all those guys. He's down uh, to pick 25 from 20 last month and 13 the month before. So I like all those guys. Pick them up. Uh, Miles probably has the most question marks around him out of any of those guys right now, but I'm, I'm still down uh, to rock with Miles Sanders. Now we get a little drum roll. Brrr, enter the first rook. Welcome to the party, Najee Harris. Already, it's February. We got the first rookie coming in here, as we promised. Rookies are in the mix. I didn't know if you didn't think thought we forgot, but here he is, Najee in February. That's bound to rise. Hey, where's as, all the rookie talk? As this, as this uh, thing, as this you know store moves on, he's going to build and build and build. And you saw what, just like you said with Clyde edwards alaire you saw by the end of the off season fucking first rounder uh jonathan taylor first rounder so Najee could easily be there at the end of the summer um uh, Najee's adp is only going up yeah um so the next group kind of all stays the same where they were the last time we talk eckler jones dj moore uh godwin mixon higgins scary terry uh all those guys jumble around for the most part but stay in that in that third round arena um, and then enter the second rook, number nine from Clemson, Travis Etienne. Just Go squeezes Tigers. into the third round. Just squeezes into the third round here. So we got two rookies. That's going up too, baby. Let's go. Uh, getting into the third round, I'd have to agree. Travis Etienne, uh, let's go. <laughs> say, number nine will be increasing his uh, average draft position. So heading into round four. Another rookie here drops eight spots or uh, yeah, falls eight spots to, to pick 38. James Robinson, everybody's darling, helped a lot of people out through the fantasy season last year. And now, you know, he's not as respected as those other guys. They get no respect. Uh, he's just he's just, you know, falling down the board a little bit here, but but still a decent asset. We'll see what Urban Meyer does how, what he turns them into and if they bring in somebody else, but you know, there's some questions around James Robinson and whether or not the new regime will keep him as, you know, as our big thing was, Hey, you know, I'm fine with James Robinson, good player, but there's a really, it's going to be, there's a really small percentage that he gets as many carries as he did, which made him as good as he was. It's not that he's not good, but it's going to be tough to get back to the threshold of where he was at uh, last year. So here comes the third rookie in the top 50. Jamar Chase pops in at number 40. Jamar says, what up? Uh, The wide receiver one of the draft class for most people. I think we all mostly agree on that uh, as of right now. Um, So he's in there. David Montgomery, the glow wears off. The lack of respect starts to kick back in. He's down to 46 from 36. Nothing happened and he drops 10 spots, huh? (laughs) Well, (laughs) I'll tell you, that, that glow wore off. He, he, all those people that he helped through the playoffs, win championships, threw him right back to the curb. Fuck that guy. He's they started sick. talking with their buddies at work, and their buddies was like, ah, David, David Montgomery, Montgomery. And he, that and, guy's and you're, terrible. You're thinking to yourself, well, I don't want to seem not cool, so I better agree, <laughs> even though he just won me a championship. Yeah, so they need some offensive line help. They obviously don't have a quarterback, and they could be losing their best wide receiver asset. So, you know, I could get it a little bit. But like you said, Big Co., you know, you could still get very, very good fantasy production from a team who isn't super great uh, on the field. So the Bears. Uh, then you got Amari Cooper checking in. He's got a he falls a decent amount from forty seven to thirty nine, um, or from thirty nine to forty seven rather. Um, Lamar Jackson comes in the back door here at forty eight. Last go around, we only had one QB in the top fifty. Lamar makes it two this month. What can you say? You know, we, we gave you a pat on the back the last time for only putting one guy in the top 50. Now the drafters are putting two guys in. You can tell it's the off season. <laughs> guys aren't as sharp as they were. 
Um, yeah. They're out of but game shape already. Yeah. yeah. Brandon Ayuk uh, fades back almost out of the top 50, comes in at, uh, and at 49 from 44. Um, and then the last player of the top 50 of the ADP right now is another rookie, Devonta Smith. Um, so he rounds out the top 50. Um, then guys who were out, out of the top 50 who were in last month, Jerry Judy is at 54. Kareem Hunt way down to 63. Uh, Chase Claypool, 53. Deontay Johnson, 51. And DJ Chark at 60. Um, and then, you know, just to give you some more rookies and they're floating right around here. They're, they're, they're hanging out. Uh, Javante Williams is some, some people like him more than, uh, Travis Etienne. He's coming in at, at 59. Um, Kyle Pitts, 62, the tight end, the mismatch, Jalen Waddle, 64, uh, Rondell Moore, 69, Bateman, Batman, <laughs> Bateman, 75. Bateman's coming in at 75. And then our boy, I just had to throw him on here. AJ Dillon, 74. Holler at your boy. That's only I, going up. Maybe you need to sell, but I don't even care. <laughs> I'm hanging up. <laughs> well, it what depends on what do? happens with Aaron Jones' contract. But yeah, nobody knows. And and Jamal Williams. So four, four 2021 rookies in the top 50 already. Um, and 11 2020 rookies in the top 50 right now. So 15 total of the last two classes already in the top 50. Uh, so that's that's pretty decent. Anything you guys want to go back through? I ran through a lot of stuff there. Anything that sticks out to you guys? Anything that you want to talk about real quick? Uh, floors open. What do you think? I like that. That this. The the seems to be getting worse and worse every year. The the Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook pick that you get a first five pick. It's almost not fair what you can do with it into the second, early third. Like are you get giving me a Saquon Barkley or a Jonathan Taylor, somebody like that at the top, pick a name to, you know, whoever Alvin Kamara. Sure. Dalvin Cook. Give me one of those guys. And you come down here to the 24 area. I mean, you can get your boy Travis Kelsey, maybe. You, you let me get Travis Kelsey, or you, like you said, you throw on. I mean, there. Josh Jacobs is going to completely could continue to tumble. Antonio Gibson, upside is tremendous. Throw on Austin Eckler. Uh, just give me, you mm -hmm. know, the what you can do there is. A George already, Kittle's I'm, down there in case you want a tight end I, and you miss Travis you, Kelsey, you know. Say you got the one four, right? And you didn't care about Alpha Kamara or Dalvin Cook. You already got a second round pick to trade back to five. So you got an extra second round pick next year going in because you've already you just the dude wanted Dalvin Cook. You didn't care. You got Alvin Kamara. Now you get down here and you got all the you got four or five studs in front of you, and you got you got so many pick for them. Say you pick one of them, and then you go you're in your third pick, and you got a chance in the third round to get Eckler, and or your second. Let's say you go back to second. Sorry, I'm trying to. You got your second pick at the end of the second round, and there's like six picks to go before you get back. But you're like, there's 10 guys that I absolutely love here. And this is such a great spot. You can get another second round pick or improve a draft pot spot somewhere else. Move, you know, move a bump up your fourth or fifth round pick by just backing up a couple spots here with somebody somehow. And you're still in the sweet spot where, you know, you can get an Austin Eckler. Who knows if, if the Aaron Jones is going to be on the Packers or not. But Aaron Jones is a stud no matter where he's at. Sure, Obviously, I was going to say that. We haven't seen Aaron Jones play anywhere but with Aaron Rodgers. But Aaron Jones is breaking off big runs at a clip that only Nick Chubb can match. Um, you know, obviously, Chris Chris Godwin stays with the Bucks. The Bucks said he's not leaving the building. It took the Buccaneers 9, 10, 12 weeks into season to get hot. And I think you would – and Godwin was beat up. And I think Broken you put – finger. You yeah, and all Tom Brady did was continue to heap praise on him, even though he, what I'm he saying. You kind of let him down a couple times when think, he, after he did. I think Godwin's going to be one of the most, uh, like, fantasy pop. I mean, not that he's going to be a comeback player because he didn't get really hurt, but I think fantasy-wise, Godwin's going to be red yeah. hot to start the season next year. I mean, year. shit, he was a fringe first-rounder last year, and now he's all the way down in the third round. And now, like you talking, you talked about with uh, Clyde Edwards, Jay Wayne, now we can Probably. obtain right. Chris Godwin, and I think he's going to be huge for fantasy teams. Yeah. Haven't been able to obtain Chris Godwin since he was at like 40 ADP, which we, we were on him in the 80s and the 40s. And then we got into it in the 20s and we were like, oh, maybe, maybe not. And then it went up to like eight and we were like, okay. <laughs> so we got a big, we got a, we got a startup draft strategy uh, video coming out. And uh, some of this, some of this goes, we'll go, we we'll go a little bit deeper into this process 
of the trades and everything. But that's uh, that that top half of the first round. Not that you can't get great. I mean, the AJ Brown back to backs at the at the back of the first round is going to be fun. Um, there's a sweet spot in this draft and a couple of sweet spots, and we'll get more into that in the dynasty startup video. But this uh, this ADP is always a good time to run through for sure. I, I like that you sprinkled a little bit of that trade talk on there at the end about, you know, moving back, picking up a second. That's the type of stuff uh, we Bico just put out a, a show over on Patreon. We talked for an hour about some uh, high dollar FFPC trades that uh, Bico has been making in the offseason and breaking down how to go through those trades. So that was a, that was a really good informational show. Um, and we don't put that stuff out uh, to the public because Various reasons. Um, we like to we, we like to keep our crew, the Pleasure Chesters, happy. Uh, we also play against a fair amount of people in FFPC, so no reason to give that type of uh, logic away. Um, but just a little incentive. Figured I'd throw a little Patreon plug in there because it would be yeah. a trade trade talk show that we just released. Yeah, so that'll Jay a, a year a year or two ago when we started Patreon, I told those guys I said any as we start this Patreon. Um, I'll talk some vague trade talks here and there. I'll talk some trade talks with a home league or something, but all of my high dollar FFPC league trade talks goes to Patreon only. Yeah. So as well as putting out extra episodes over there, one or two a month, um, we got a discord channel. That's always, always uh, available. We're, we're on there and as well as all the other patrons. So, you know, there's, and you're the able to get in leagues. Heard, the patrons have already heard this uh, show. We get a little uh, early access to content. Um, I just throw stuff up there as soon as I can before it gets mm-hmm. completely fine tuned and edited. And and like you said, leagues are starting up. People, they're already popping off in the Discord channel about starting up uh, yeah. dynasty startup leagues. And so it's a good time. Come check it out. But yeah, if thing. you can't check out, just hit us, hit subscribe on the YouTube, baby. Let me get a thumbs up and a comment. Last thing on the way out, they just said that uh, startups or new startups are live on FFPC. And I was just talking to Casey this morning. Uh, we're going to do an FF, FFPC startup. And it's the three of us are going to split a $250 team. And every single thing we do from the beginning startup draft, every single trade offer we get, every single trade we make, every single pick we make in the startup through the season and continuous on will be 100% transparent and part of the process with patreon our pleasure chesters will be living this draft living this team with us they're going to be with us as we build it they're going to be with us as we go through the season they're going to be with us as we go through the rookie draft next year every single trade offer we get we're going to talk about it on patreon like every single trade offer that we go and um solicit everything that we kind of go after if we if we're sending trades or for receiving trades even if we're just rejecting trades why we rejected it what we said in the um, comment box to try to make that build that bridge and build mm-hmm. that um, that friendship those you built you you get four or five friendships started in a patron in a dynasty league you're you're on your way to being able to make trades i mean for sure you got to build them bridges not tear you them down you got to kill them with kindness you gotta kill absolutely them with kindness. so we're giving away too much guys we're, we're giving we'll we'll um that way, you know, every we thought it would be a cool idea that, you know, you talk about trades and there's so much context that you have to go through to really get into the meat and potato in trades. And we try to, you know, that's why it's always hard to answer those questions without knowing everything. We want to have one, you know, which we do talk about a lot of different things that we do in trades and whatnot. But this one will be one that you guys are that the patrons are always involved in their their heads will be wrapped around what we're doing. They're always hearing about it. The team will be up on the Patreon website. When we do things, uh, you know, that, that that so you can always look at it and see what we're doing yeah. and, and we'll be talking about it a lot so that it'll be uh, pretty excited to be, be an interesting uh, experiment to, to run through and, and see how it goes. Good stuff. All right. All right, oh. boys. Catch you next time. Appreciate everybody sticking with us. We'll see you later. 